welcome. Let's talk about the King's affirmation. Yes. All right. Um, in this segment, I, I like talking about like the brink of, of your breakout moment or your breakout moment as it is essentially the brink of, you know, you reaching a new milestone in, in the cultural status, I guess, whatever. <laughs> but regardless, I was introduced to and he go through the King's affirmation on mm. TikTok. Ah. Damn, I've got to say TikTok with everything these days. But I mean... <laughs> I was, it's, listen, and I remember remember being like, "Dang, who is this feeling like this about theirself?" And like <laughs> everyone else is catching on. So I'm like, "Oh wow, I guess you know it's a cool thing to affirm yourself now." Mm. And mm. and not to say I thought it was not cool, but yeah. it was just something that I think you experience in your own spaces, mm. in your own time, or you're just strong. I don't want to say strong enough, but like you more you become more self-aware to be able to tend to yourself in that type of way to give yourself these affirmations i didn't even know what affirmations was yeah. or were until i guess this journey of self-care and self-discovery and whatever whatever but even still my affirmations were sticky notes on my vanity in my whatchamacallit it yeah. wasn't through a song i heard or reels or videos i heard on tiktok and so um i think it kind of like made a lot of people feel a little more safe and, and not safe but um, a little bit more it felt like affirmations were an accessible thing it wasn't something yeah. you had to go heal for like mm -hmm. no just turn that on right now literally you it, you know? as you were talking some what came to mind was the fact that like everything you say is an affirmation mm -hmm. everything you think is an affirmation and when you start to think when you start to when people start to realize that that's when we realize how important words are to your reality really yeah. or the reality that you are choosing to accept that you're choosing to see yeah and uh you can really limit yourself out you know outside of all the social and societal restrictions that we essentially don't we i don't want to say we don't have control over because like anything is possible we are as powerful as we say that we are but outside of that like knowing that it is the words and the thoughts that shape the things that happen around you, mm. uh, that, that, that's true power, that's true greatness. And Chip that was so, yeah. really, I guess the, the core of why I made the King's Affirmation, it, it came about because um, I had experienced yes. some, <laughs> I had experienced story. some, uh, some cyber bullying for the first time online. And um, not, well, not the first time, but, uh, it was like an influx of it. And I think cyberbullying is like not a great word for it. It was more so erasure. I was I was feeling erased. I was feeling like people were, you know, I mean, that's what's happening because we, we always have a choice mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to what we do and what we don't do. Um, and uh, it... I was being, it, it was a point where one of my videos went viral. It wasn't the King's Ever Me, clearly it wasn't out yet. Mm -hmm. But um, one of my videos went viral. Like somebody, somebody posted it um, on their story, like somebody famous, I think, I, I don't I don't remember. But um, usually when that happens, just in general, like I'll get like an influx of followers that um, don't know me, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I don't expect these people to know me. Um, but uh, it it was really hard. It's always hard. Uh, when people uh, refer to me outside of who I am and what I am, and um, it it is a it it's essentially a it is a part of this. I it's not something that I can essentially escape. However, you know, social media in general, like the way that's set up, like having an influx of so many people speaking about you but it's not you. Like it's this perception that oh, they have yeah. of you. Um, so being, you know, referred to it in that way, you know, people saying she, her, oh my God, like she's a queen, she's a goddess. Look at this gorgeous woman, like, wow. Like you are what we need from for the females, like the females, the female this and the, it was, Wow, when when that happens, when I experience it, when I when it is said to me and about me, it it feels like, you know, that moment where somebody says something to you that you, that hurt 
like and it like your gut drops mm. like that feeling and it kind of makes you want to cry just cringe a little I, bit. yeah I, I feel that every day um just because you know I, I i can't not be on social media because social media is a medium and i have an intention for it to reach people like that's that's it it, it doesn't matter who. And so that's why I, I always remind myself of that when those things happen. But at the time it was extremely triggering and something had happened where I, you know, cause it was so many people, I was like, oh, you know, I'll just make a post about it. Just letting people know like what my pronouns are and that I'm genderless and that, you know, I'm really excited for the journey and stuff. And um, somebody reported it. They reported the post and- You uh, report that? As, what is the report for? They what, reported what kind of- it for nudity and sexual content. And um, Instagram took it down and they, it's it's still affected my account to this day. Like it, you know, like algorithm wise, like I think wow. like my account has been like forever flagged. Shadowed. Be- yeah, in, in that shadows, way. Shadows, whatever they call it. Yeah. Shadow band. Shadow um, band, yeah. And it was really hard for me. I'm like tearing up thinking about it now, like because it it's just, okay. it made, it reminded me of everything that I had to go through when I was growing up, like it mm. was like, wow, here I go again. Right. All of these people telling me who I'm supposed to be and how I'm supposed to be. Wow. And I took a break from posting for like, I want to say like about a week or so. And I, you know, I spoke to my my therapist. Oh, thank God for her. Oh, shout out to therapy. Hello. I'm still trying to get shout, back into it. Shout out for real. Cause wow. What? I spoke to my therapist. I, um, and you know, my uh, remedy for experiencing these things is to transmute it into song. And um, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't even gonna make the song, but then something <gasps> else happened on Ooh. Twitter where the thing you people weren't. were saying that, no lie, they were like, wow, nobody's ever gonna wanna listen to you. Like, this voice makes me wanna kill myself. That's crazy. Who said that? I don't know. It was a couple of people. Though. It was enough people. Like, so there's this thing on Twitter called uh, Spaces uh, oh, or something. They, they were yes. talking about you in a space, so they, like Clubhouse. But, yeah. Like, so they had like, uh, there, there was a space where they had like, you know, sing, the people were singing. And yeah. I was like, oh, I want to sing. I just, you know, sometimes I just be wanting to sing. And I did. I don't think I did bad. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, but apparently a lot of people did not like it and uh, decided to share that online. I think that's very interesting it's too. Because it's like, y'all are hashtagging this. Like, I'm gonna see this. And I understand that like, oh, you know, there's people like, oh, well, it's the internet. Like you shouldn't be on the internet if you're sensitive in that way. No, you guys are just so far removed from like humanity and the fact humanity. that people feel things. Like the fact that like the things that you say have repercussions on top of that digital footprint that it is here forever. Mm-hmm. It's never going away. And on top of that, it's like a list, you know, when you're scrolling, you're seeing yeah. all of that. So that overwhelmed me and I was triggered. I had, it was, it was a lot. I um, ended up, uh, that's, that's how I wrote it. It was like my response to all of that. And um, it was my sister. Here we go. She's back. Akela, she came in and she was like, what if you did a, a rewrite to uh, Do We Have a Problem by Nicki Minaj uh, featuring Lil Baby. And um, that's that's what I do on my page. I'll do like mm-hmm. different rewrites and those, reimagines yeah. and stuff. So I was like, are you sure? Like, is, is that, oh, uh, he was like, yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I, I reproduced it, um, <laughs> the whole beat and stuff. And something was missing for me and before I started writing. I added like the, the oh, that's in the beginning of the King's Affirmation mm-hmm. before the words start. And then I just looped that and I heard the like I had the melody came first and then that just came to you. Yes. Then the words started to come like it was like hitting me in the back of my head. And um, that that was it. And I, I recorded it like I laid it down and that was like the first like version of it. It's not up anymore, but that was the first version that I had done. And like it went like a little viral, like it got like 20,000 likes or something like that. Okay. And then, uh, enough, no. right. It was something. It was something. And I didn't really revisit it, but I would listen. I realized I would listen to it on my phone. Like I would be listening to it over and over again on my own on my own time. And something told me like one day to just just put on some makeup and just sit on the ground and sing it acapella. Like, don't do anything. And I was like, all right, whatever. And I, I guess I'll just do this. Let's see what happens. And I, I did Reach it. Reach the folks. I did one take. And then I just, I hated it. 
and I was like, I'm just gonna post it. Yeah, whatever. Thank you. Okay. Like, oh, I mean, you did, but like, I'm like, just to be fair, that's me all the time. Okay. Like with everything, <laughs> I'm just like, wow, this can be better. Maybe if I ah, but it was also late. I was like, I'm tired, so I just posted it, and I. I didn't check it. Like, that's what I do when I post things. I'll just post it and then run away. Um, and I went to sleep and then I woke up and my phone was like blowing up. I could not understand what was going on. I was like, why is there so many notifications? Because it wasn't the first time that I'd had a viral yeah. video. Like it, it's happened many times actually, but this was the first time that it happened so fast. And it was like so many people. And I was like, what is going on? And I, People started duetting and like just seeing. Oh, already the after, way. after one. That's Hell, crazy. Yo, it's fast, like fast, yeah. like so fast. And I was like, wait, hold on. This means I have to finish the song because I knew yep, you I do. already knew what was happening. So <laughs> I literally like I wrote the second verse um, really fast, and then uh, I just sent all the stems and everything to Akela. And no lie, she, I. Is it, she does that too? She is a, so, okay. <laughs> uh, Kayla is a one-stop queen, okay. Nah, so she, I sent I sent the stems to her, but her uh, fiance and my soon-to-be brother-in-law, he's a he's my engineer, okay. uh, mixer, producer, all that stuff. Um, so I was essentially sending it to him, but she also produces yeah. as well, just for just getting that out there. 